Hey, hello, happy Tuesday. Uh, welcome to Grace's weekly children's message. I'm Kelly from Grace Lutheran Church and I'm down here in our basement. So welcome to our message today. Um, how was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Are you looking forward to the 4th of July weekend? You probably have some fun things planned maybe. Uh, I just got back from an awesome trip with some of the senior high youth and some adult leaders. We were up in the Boundary Waters where we did a lot of canoeing, backpacking, camping. It was fantastic. Thank you so much for all the people who have kept us in your prayers um, to keep us safe. We had great weather, we stayed safe, and we had an awesome, awesome time together learning about God and the beauty of God's creation. So it was just awesome. So a couple of announcements really quick. Um, tonight in our West parking lot, we are having a parking lot activities night with fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. So for kids going into fourth, fifth, and sixth, you guys can join me in the West parking lot from six to seven o'clock tonight. I've got some different activities and games planned. Hope to have a nice little group come out and see each other. We'll kind of practice social distancing. Um, we'll play games that don't require us to be really close to each other and, and touching and all that stuff. So come on out. It's going to be kind of hot. So we might do a little bit of water play. Um, so you might get wet, but hope to see you there. That's our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders tonight. Now tomorrow at Emmanuel Baptist, we're having a joint worship service with Emmanuel Baptist, um, <clears throat> Hope in Graston, and um, Calvary here in Mora. Those are the ELCA churches that are in our county. And so we have a group that's called Kelka. And we are putting together a joint parking lot worship service. That's tomorrow night, Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Brunswick at 7 p.m. So come on, join us for that service. Uh, we will have communion, but bring your own communion elements um, and join us. It's going to be awesome. And then the other announcement is for Vacation Bible School, the at-home edition that we're doing this year. Please, please get registered for that. You can register by going to gracechurchmora.com. And there's a Children, Youth, and Family tab. You just click on that. And the registration form is right there um, to click on, to go in, register your kids. We need to know numbers so we can start getting packets ready next week. So please, please um, get registered for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, we have been really talking about this mission statement. We're going to keep going because there's lots of parts to it. We say a lot, right? So, we've talked about how we will go. So, we will go. We will move. We will take action. As spirit-filled, we will have the spirit in us, giving us superpowers. As spirit-filled disciples of Jesus Christ, so that means we're going to put the love of God and the love of others, first and foremost, as we go forward as spirit-filled people. And the next part of this is committed to change the world. So we will go as spirit-filled disciples of Jesus Christ, committed to change the world. Now, I don't know about you, but when I say those words, when we're talking about this statement, when I'm saying those words, I get a little overwhelmed to say, I'm going to be committed to change the world. I mean, first of all, committed means you're in it. You are in it till it's done. And you're not going to stop until you've accomplished your goal. That's what it means to be committed. So I'm going to be committed. I'm not going to stop to change the world. I mean, that's huge. That's a big deal. So sometimes when I say this part, I get a little bit overwhelmed. And I, when we were camping this weekend in the Boundary Waters, we had these great big backpacks that we had to carry. And because we carried all our clothes and our food and our tents and everything that we needed to carry, we had to have in our backpacks. And they were these big packs and they weighed a lot. And man, that felt heavy. It was heavy to have those packs on my back. And that's kind of like how I feel when I say, I'll be committed to change the world. It's like putting on this great big backpack and going, huh, this is too much work. I just don't know if I can do it. So think about that heavy burden that we have 
when we say that we're going to change the world. And then I'm going to read two things to you. And we'll maybe think about how this, how this might relate to that burden. So first of all, the first thing I'm going to read is out of our Spark Story Bible. And it's the parable of the mustard seed. So you can see that great big tree there with the bird nest in it. That great big strong tree came from a tiny mustard seed. So I'm gonna read the story. Hmm, Jesus said one day to a crowd of listeners, he tapped his chin. Hmm, how can I describe the family of God to you? Hmm, aha, uh -huh, he said, God's family is like a mustard seed. But mustard seeds are tiny, the crowd exclaimed. Jesus scooped some round black seeds from the ground and rolled them around in his palm. When they grow, the mustard seeds turn into the largest, strongest plants around. Even birds put their nest in their branches, just like you can see right there. The crowd was starting to nod. They were getting it. It starts small, but the tiny seed grows into something great. He stepped back to show a full-grown mustard bush as tall as two people. God's family may have started out small, but each time someone shows or tells others about the love of God, it grows and it grows. So I'll put that story down. Remember that story, the parable of the mustard seed. And then I'm going to read from our gospel lesson for this week. So our gospel lesson for this week, which you'll hear on Sunday, um, when you tune in for the Sunday worship, is from Matthew 11, and it's verses 28 to 30. So Matthew is that first book in the New Testament, so you should be able to find that. And in Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30, it says, Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So that's very important to remember that verse. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So those two things, that Bible verse and then the story from the Spark Story Bible, can give us a little bit of help with committed to change the world. Because that committed to change the world is so big. And it feels like such a burden on us to have to think about that. But we just have to remember that number one, the mustard seed was a tiny little seed and it could grow into this huge, strong, beautiful tree. And that means for us that we don't necessarily have to do huge, big things to change the world because sometimes we can't do that. But every little small thing, every little seed that we plant, every time we show love to somebody else, every time we help somebody who's in need, that is changing the world because those little seeds grow into something bigger. We can be sure of that. So that's the first thing that helps us with that part. But also, come to me all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. So that might mean a lot of things. It might mean your own personal burdens that you have, things that you're worried about. But it can also mean that burden of feeling like, how do I change the world? How do I stay committed to changing the world, God? But by bringing him, if, if I could have had my big backpack this weekend and, and given it to God to help me carry, he surely would have. He would have helped me with that burden. And in fact, not just God helping us with the burdens, but when we all work together, that burden is lighter. So when I was with the group in the Boundary Waters, we all had to help. Everybody had to chip in and do different things. Because if it was one person trying to do all the work, we never could have done it. But because we all helped, we were able to do it. And when we all help, 
when we all focus on being disciples of Jesus Christ committed to change the world, that load is easier and we can do it. So when we say that part of it, we don't need to be overwhelmed because we know every little bit helps. Even the smallest act of kindness can help to change the world. And we have God. We have God to help us with that burden. And we can trust that he will help us as we go as spirit-filled disciples of Jesus Christ committed to change the world. All right. So we're going to close with a song today. And your challenge today is to look up the verses of this song because there's a few different verses that go with this song, but I'm just going to teach you the chorus. But probably if you Google or search a little bit, you'll be able to find the verses as well. And they're kind of fun. So the song we're going to sing is Cast Your Burdens. And the actions kind of go like, you know, if you've ever gone fishing, you cast. We did some fishing in the Boundary Waters and we had to cast cast our rod and reel. So we're going to cast your burdens onto Jesus because he cares for you. Okay, and those are the words. Cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you. And we just sing that twice. And there's some clapping in between. So I'll sing it through once. And then we'll sing it through one more time um, once you've got it. And then I want you to find the verses. So that's your challenge this week is to find those verses. So here we go. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. All right, let's sing that through together again. And Remember the actions. I forgot to do the cast on the first time. All right, here we go. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. All right, so you can figure out the verses and maybe teach that song to somebody and sing it this week. All right, so I'm gonna say goodbye. I hope you have a great day. Hope to see some fourth, fifth, and sixth graders um, here tonight at church for some outdoor fun. And we'll see you on Sunday with a children's message. So have a great week and a great fourth, you guys. Bye-bye.